Hello, I'm Janet and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some stamps um, and some ideas of how you can use them. The first technique I'm going to show you involves cardboard, paints, glue and optional tape. So corrugated cardboard has two sides. Obviously one side is really wrinkly and the other side is slightly more flat. We want to be printing with a slightly more flat side so we get fewer ridges in our final design. So we are going to draw on the slightly more wrinkly side. This is because if we're drawing something like, for example, our treble clef, that matters which way it's going to be printed. So, um, I am going to draw a cloud. Uh, nice big rainy cloud. Now oh, that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? It's even it out there. Okay, this is obviously quite a simple shape. Um, and I'm going to cut this out with just a normal pair of scissors. But if you want to go for something more complicated, um, I would suggest trying to cut out as much as you can with scissors, a pair of sharp scissors. But then, um, if you need to, use a sharp knife. However, use that with uh, caution and possibly someone older around to uh, make sure that you are using it sensibly. So, I'm going to cut this out. Okay, one lovely cloud. Now I'm also going to cut some little raindrops out of the off cuts. So, actually, I only really need one raindrop, don't we? That's the whole point of stamps. Use them again. There we are. Now we need. A piece of cardboard bigger than each of these to stick our pieces down to. They're going to be the backing piece of our stamp. Stick that in there. With this, with the backing piece of cardboard, it doesn't really matter which way up it is. Um, but I'm going to Stick it down, but do remember, remember that we're meant to be sticking the more corrugated, wrinkly side downwards. You can use most types of glue on this, like something like prick stick um, would work. I'm using a contact adhesive because that is the first glue that I found in my drawer. Yes, I do have an entire drawer full of different adhesives. So I'm going to give that a bit of a wriggle so it stays down. So I'm going to have a little bit of trouble here because I've got a big bend in mine, but it's going to look beautiful. I'm going to cut them out. Now, you can just use these like this. You're very careful to hold and lift the edges. And if you are very steady handed, you won't find this a problem. However, I have tremors and there's no way that I'm going to be able to pick that off the piece of paper without dropping it. So I'm gonna make little handles. So the way I do this, this is entirely optional. But a little bit of tape. I am using silver gaffer tape, but that is again the first thing I found in my drawer. You do not need to use fancy gaffer tape, you can use cellar tape. Anything that sticks to cardboard is absolutely fine. And I'm just using off cuts of cardboard. This is a tiny triangle here. 
which I have wrapped in, put the tape on here, wrapped it over, so it's down there. Stick that on, one very easy handle, pick up your stamp. I'm going to show you again because I don't think that was terribly clear. Get your bit of tape and a small off cut of material. This is also a triangle, but most of mine have been squares or rectangles. And you attach it a bit like that. That's going to be over the edge. Attach it on one side so it's overlapping. Flip it over. Fold that kind of back on itself so that it doesn't stick to itself, so it looks a bit like that. Fold that over again. So you now have a bit like a bird. And that will now just stick on. And there you have one very simple little handle for a raindrop. Okay, so we're now going to try and paint things. So I've got my palette, a bit of cardboard. I've got a spreader, which is another bit of cardboard, because I've been doing a lot of online shopping. So I put a load of paint on here, it's a lot more than I th always think I need. I'm going to spread it out evenly to make a nice mess. But a very thin, not thin, very even layer. I'll actually make quite a thick layer, because otherwise it's not going to transfer onto your stamp. So that is a quite a thick layer of blue paint there. And then I'm going to get my stamp. I'm going to push my stamp onto this layer and I'm going to give it a little wriggle around so it picks up quite a bit of paint. It gets really stuck. Okay. And then we check the bottom of the stamp, see, has it picked up the colour everywhere? And you can see almost but not quite, there's a few bits around there. If you think you can see some gold on my stamp, you're absolutely correct. I tried to use this stamp with some gold just a minute ago. It didn't quite work, so we're trying it with blue now. That was a problem with the gold stamp, a uh, gold paint, not the problem with the stamp. Okay, I think we've got a pretty thick coverage there. So, we're now going to push this palette out of the way, get some paper. So, I've just got normal printer paper here, but I've got a stack, um, stack here so that we don't really want it to bleed through. So, I've got a stack of paper, but you could put whatever you're stamping onto, like onto some other cardboard or onto a plastic bag or something. Just make sure that you're not like bleeding through onto your grandma's best tablecloth or something. Okay, and then position your stamp where you want it. Oh, mine's just given a nice squelch. And press it down. You want to press it quite firmly, but not hard, because you don't want to squish the um, cardboard down. Okay. Good squish all over, and I think that's nice and stuck. Yeah, it's very stuck to the cardboard. And then peel it up. Now we've got our cloud. So we get these lines in it, but that's you're gonna get that because it's corrugated cardboard. And even though we're using the flat side, it's still corrugated cardboard. But uh, I quite like it. Um, cool. So now we need to do our raindrop, which I'm also gonna do in blue. Let's. So put our picture out of the way for the minute. Get back our blue paint and our blue spreader. Spread that around a bit, make sure we've got enough paint. You might need to put some more paint on it. I put out quite a lot, so I think we're all right. Spread that around a lot. Okay, so once then you want to grab your raindrop. Again, same process. Push the raindrop into the paint, cover the raindrop. See that mine's got a bit on the edge. So you're going to have to be really careful when you print it, you don't want to push the edges down into it. That's something you have to be careful with all kind of printing. So now we push that down, put the ring up here, 
yet and my edge has made contact. So what I'm going to do before I do the next one, I'm going to move this out of the way, snip that off, snip that as well. So that should help. Then put some more paint on, loads on here, so <laughs> I've got some more on the edge. You just kind of have to be careful. I'm going to put some more raindrops on. And I'm going back to the paint. And I've got a raindrop. And there we are. That is our stamped picture. Now, this is quite a boring picture. But this is just the start. So cardboard works quite well for your quite simple shapes or your big shapes like the cloud. But when you want to do something a little bit more complicated, if you've enjoyed making stamps, you might want to invest in buying some of this material. Now this is quite a thin foam and it's made of a material called EVA and you'll find it in craft shops and some kind of discount shops, power shops, things like that. And it's called uh, craft foam or EVA foam. And with that you can carve quite intricate stamps that hold up really well over the years. I mean these are some stamps that I made, gosh, at least eight years ago. So this time I'm going to use a little bit of EVA foam as my palette. So I'm just going to put a blob of paint on there. Spread it out. Make sure it's a nice even layer. And find my stamp. Press it in. Whether I think I've covered it, and I think I have. Got my paper ready. And I'm going to stamp. And there we are. You can see that's a lot more detailed. Um, and it doesn't have the lines across it. Now these hold up really well. Um, I would suggest washing the paint off these. Um, I use a paintbrush to help get the paint off it and then they will last you very well. So, there you have it. Um, once you've got your stamps, you're ready to take over the world. And you're not just limited to paper. For example, this is a t-shirt that I printed about nine years ago using my EVA stamps. I actually used bleach for this and as you can see it's still well loved because I still got it. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful summer and uh, continue to enjoy the rest that uh, Sidmouth Online and Shooting Roots have to offer. Bye bye!